Well, John, on behalf of uh, Brevard County Community and the team at Space Ghost Daily, we want to congratulate you uh, on your being uh, selected as the Space Ghost Daily 2014 Person of the Year. Well, I'm, I'm honored. It's, uh, you know, humbled by it as well. You know, the, there's the work of a lot of people here at the port that makes the port successful. So often I'm the face that's out front. So on behalf of all 217 people at Port Canaveral, you know, it's, it's really an honor to, to accept that. Well, thank you. And um, looking back on 2014, what have been the, uh, the most significant uh, things that have been accomplished at the port? Uh, well, the biggest in, in dollar scale and, you know, measurable is the new cruise terminal one opening up. So, so that, that has been a, just a breakneck speed. Uh, it opened last Saturday for the first time. We had our first port of call ship in here on Monday this week with the, uh, uh, quantum of the seas coming down from New York and, and like all new things, it had its little glitches and little imperfections, uh, but, but, you know, more has been put into place this week to make sure it goes smoother. Uh, that was a $110 million project. It also involved doing the new boat ramps, which, which the feedback we've gotten from those, uh, have really been phenomenal. There was a lot of fear of change and, you know, messing with the status quo, but, but I think most realized that it, that it worked out in a very positive way. Uh, but I think one of the biggest game changers that people still aren't seeing or recognizing is what the container facility on the north end. So that's under construction. Uh, it'll open April of this year in 15, so it's not sort of a recognizable achievement yet. But doing the contract with Gulf Tainer and GTUSA, their new division, uh, building that relationship, it really will be game changing for Brevard County and East Central Florida. Mm -hmm. How many local jobs do you think we've added, you know, in 2014? Uh, well, with the new cruise terminal and the ships coming in, we were up about 1,500. Uh, and, you know, that's, that is not directly port staff, but port personnel, uh, taxi support, transportation. Uh, folks checking in at the cruise lines, working directly with the cruise lines and their agents. Um, and then cargo is just starting to go. Gulf Tainer's doing their hiring now. So we're, we're anticipating that will be about another two to 500 jobs to get started. Uh, with the logistics side, warehousing, uh, that should get in the first five years up about 5,000 jobs for the region. Tremendous. And what have been the biggest challenges in 2014 that you've met? Uh, you know, managing uh, expectations, you know, as the port changes from the sleepy fishing village port to a world-class port, changes is hard. And, you know, looking at doing connectivity, we've had a lot of, um, I'll call it more angst, as people understand doing rail connections. Obviously, our Ind Indian River Lagoon is struggling, so people don't want to see any more harm come. We're optimistic that the rail connections can be done and actually create some positive change uh, to the Indian River Lagoon, to the ecosystem that's there. So balancing, you know, that people's port, which we've always called Port Canaveral, uh, with a world-class cargo and cruise port comes with some struggle. Uh, so trying to balance all the good we have with adding all of the growth, uh, you know, has some struggle. And I think it, it really balances education with people understanding and, and not being as afraid of the future. I hear often, we don't wanna turn this place into Miami or New York City. And I think we're far from that. It's not where our vision is, but uh, we do need to grow to support a growing Florida. We just passed New York in the past couple of weeks in population and those trends are gonna continue growing. Well, as the port's chief executive, you've got a huge responsibility and you're really meeting that so well. You know, as, as the port's chief executive, what, uh, what keeps you awake at night? Um, you know, I sleep well because I'm exhausted at the end of the day. But, but, you know, the concerns are always something major happening in a negative way to the cruise industry. Those are luxury resorts that are tied up here by ropes. Uh, so major changes in cruise preference and taste. We're in a global economy. China is growing. Australia is growing dramatically in cruise. Uh, Northern Europe. Uh, we're not alone. You know, we sit here as number two, moving to number one in, in cruise in overall volume. But the whole world is going after the cruise market. You know, we'll be a Cruise Miami conference later in March this year. 
and there'll be probably about 80 or 90 major cities around the world competing for that cruise business. So it's it's not a it's not a given. Uh, and then the other uh, side of it is is just making sure that we really make the right steps. You know the, that we don't want to do the if you build it they will come. So we're trying to do very calculated business decisions because we're not a private company. We're the publicly owned port authority. So when you're spending the public's money, you want to be very prudent that you're doing it well. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, you're kicking off uh, 2015 by hosting the Beach Boys. We're uh, very pleased about that. And uh, what other exciting things can we see, uh, expect to see at the port in 2015? Uh, well, the opening of the container facility, uh, we're anticipating that uh, auto terminal facility will get underway in 15. We're hoping this January that we can move to some final contracts in, in uh, that division. It's all, all new business for the area. Uh, that too will create about three to 400 jobs right off the bat, you know, between the who's at the terminal and trucking jobs coming and going. Um, the Cove development process will be formalizing its process and getting underway. Uh, and we're looking at where we put a new cruise terminal. So I would anticipate before 15 is done, we're going to pull the trigger on starting another new cruise terminal again. So no rest for the wicked, as they say. And, uh, you know, just, just going to keep on growing because the jobs and the mission of, you know, building a better economy in Brevard County is just too critical not to take advantage of, of all the port can be. Uh, logistics, we, we bought the 270 acres at 524 and I-95, so we envision that turning into a world-class logistics center. Uh, we already have conversations going with two groups for putting logistics warehouses that are over a million square feet each, uh, and another firm in, is interested in 200,000 square foot of Class A office over there. Uh, so all very positive steps that, that we think will create a very wonderful 2015. Well, our readers from Space Coast Daily really enjoy coming out to the port to eat and drink and have a nice time out here at, at uh, Fish Lips and those sorts of places. Yep. What uh, what uh, changes can we expect to see in that regard re regarding the cove? Uh, well, the waterfront of the cove, we anticipate staying just as comfortable and down to earth as it's always been. So. Uh, Grills has just done a renovation and uh, a little bit of expansion of, of uh, their facilities and uh, Millikens and Rusty's Fish Lips Baja uh, will all be in place. The Millikens are talking about doing some additional changes. We haven't seen what those are yet uh, for expanding some waterfront use. Uh, but then the Cove developer and new hotel uh, will be coming into the area, a four-star hotel, uh, to upgrade the product offerings for the region. Uh, the venue center will be in discussion, especially with that next cruise terminal, uh, and may be some segue between bringing artists here to go on cruises as well as having a before event cruise. Um, so I think what people will see is they'll have all of their favorites still in place. It'll still have the quaint fishing village feel and interactive on the waterfront, sit on the decks, enjoy a drink and, and the food we've always loved but then some additional choices as well. Uh, more family entertainment coming involved and just a vibrancy so that it'll become a place to be, just an added choice for both locals and the tourists coming to the port. Well, John, we can't thank you enough on behalf of Brevard County and our team at Space Coast Daily for all your dedication you know, in serving the port and the people. We want to congratulate you on being the uh, Space Coast Daily 2014 Person of the Year. Well, thank you. It's it's an honor, and, and we really appreciate it. Love, love reading the uh, website and going often. Thank you.